glory in this place. Come on, lift your voice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to give him the glory this morning. Hallelujah. Because we know that we are a victorious people. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Bless the name of the Lord, everybody. Let's give God some glory in the house. Let's give God some glory in the house. Psalms 149 and 5 says, Let the saints be joyful in glory, and let them sing aloud in their beds. So we're going we gonna to give God some praise, and we give him glory joyfully today. I just bless the name of the Lord for another chance, another opportunity that I have, that I can come before the name, come before you today, in this place to give praise and glory to God. What an or privilege it is. What it is. We take it sometimes for granted, but it's a privilege when we can enter into this gate. The Bible says, enter in this gate with thanksgiving, enter into his course with praise. I greet you, each and every one of you, today in the name of Jesus. Uh, my respect to our senior pastor, apostle, and Lady Soph in this place, you that might be watching, I welcome you to your own media, 
wherever you're watching from, Facebook, YouTube, or on our website, our church website, I welcome you today. I'm sure that God has a blessing for you. This day as we come in this month, this season, we celebrate God. We give him thanks. This is a month that we set aside to say thank you, Lord, for what he has done. Every day is a day of thanksgiving, but we want it this special day. And we, we know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. There's so many things that God has done for us. We just want to be thankful today. We give God praise. Now, coming before uh, for our scripture reading will be Pastor Delvin. Our scripture text this morning is coming from Matthew 9, 35 to 38. Then we'll have our invocation song, My Jesus Shall Love Thee, and our invocation by Deacon Al Brown. Welcome him as he comes. Morning, church. Matthew chapter 9, beginning at verse 35 to the 38th verse, reads, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Hallelujah. My Jesus, I love thee. I know that thou art mine. Hallelujah. As we prepare our hearts for prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Most gracious and eternal everlasting Savior. God, as we come before your presence once more, lifting your name on high, declaring your glory in this place, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning and clothing us in our right mind, O oh God. Oh God, we praise and lift your name on high, Lord God, knowing that you are our God and beside you there's none other, Lord God. Father God, as we come before your presence this morning, Lord God. Father God, we pray, Lord God, that you will bless this house this morning, Lord God, and each and every one on their way, Lord God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we praise and lift your name on high, Lord God, knowing that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. 
oh God. Father God, fill this place with your presence, oh God. Oh God, those that are viewing, oh God, are by way, oh God. Those that are listening in this morning, Lord God, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that you will touch them, Lord God, in their house or in their beds, wherever they are, in their cars, oh God. Father God, let your power and your anointing surround them, oh God. Father God, I declare right now this morning that on this day that the lame walk, the blind see, and the deaf hear, oh God. Father God, send forth your supernatural power in our midst, oh God, and we pray to save us before you, oh God. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that you touch, oh God, from the pulpit to the pew, to the parking lot, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. The greeters, oh God, the ushers, oh God, the musicians, oh God, the praise team, oh God, your manservant, oh God, that come and bring to forth your word this morning, Lord God. I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you anoint him, O God, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord God. Let your glory shine bright, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Do what only you can do, O God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I declare right now that your power, Lord God, sweep through this place, O God. I declare right now in the mighty name of Jesus that the four winds of heaven blow upon this house, blow upon this land, blow upon this nation, O God, transforming us, O God, from strength to strength and from glory to glory. Let your glory shine bright. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we praise and we glorify you, Lord God, for what you're about to do in this house, Lord God. Touch, oh God, the apostle, Lord God, his wife and his family, oh God. Touch, oh God, the bishop, his wife and his family, oh God. The pastors, their wife, oh God. I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that you touch this leadership, oh God, of this house, Lord God. Oh God, surround them with your glory like never before, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Hide us, O God, underneath your arms and let your divine blood overshadow us, O God. Your never saving blood, O God, that never loses power. O God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that every demonic spirit that is under operation right now be broken over this house, be broken over this land, be broken over this nation in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, let your power fall fresh, O God, like never before. And every Every principality, according to your word, we pull them down in the mighty name of Jesus by the power of your blood. Break yokes, set captive free, liberate mind in the name of Jesus. Be glorified like never before. And to all of this, Lord God, we praise and we thank you, Lord God. We give you the glory, Lord God, for it's due unto you, Lord God. Let everything be done, oh God, be done unto you. And we give you the glory, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, and we bless you, and we say amen if and amen. shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning, UFMI. Good morning to those of you who are tuned in by way of the internet this morning. We want to let you know that Jesus loves you and he cares. There's a word here. Your name's on it. 
so you want to stay tuned. We welcome you for joining in with us this morning, whether you're from Inagua, Grand Bahama, Great Harbor Key, Africa, America, Australia, Japan, hallelujah, China. If you're tuned in this morning, we want to let you know that God loves you wherever you are, right in that space where you are. Those of you who are here gathered in the sanctuary, we want to give God thanks and praise for you being in the house of the Lord today. Mighty God, wow. None of us have been caught up and swallowed up by the cold, icy hand of death. We're still living. We're standing here, hallelujah, as a testimony and a witness that God is faithful. And so we give God thanks and praise for you. Just as you take your seats, give somebody a little bump and tell them, neighbor, oh neighbor, I'm so blessed to be worshiping next to you this morning. Man, I tell you, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. On behalf of our senior pastor, Apostle Farman, Alexander Ferguson, and the rest of us, we'd like to say welcome. We always tell our guests at UFMI that God is here and his spirit too. And so in Jesus' name, we welcome all of you. All you simply have to do is open up your hearts, and we know you will be blessed. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. We bless God to be in the presence of the Lord. 1 Timothy 5 and 17 reads, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and in doctrine. And we're talking about when we say word and doctrine, we mean preaching and teaching. And so for the past 21 years, we here at the United Faith Ministries International have been experiencing spiritual leadership. Hallelujah. That is, I mean, it goes far beyond what we ever expected in the dedication of one Apostle Falman Alexander Ferguson and his lovely wife, Lady Elder Sophia, to get the word of God out, to reach people, uh, hallelujah, change lives, hallelujah, and preach the word of God in season and out of season. And so we just want to honor God for these past 21 years. If you can stand to your feet and let's give God a glory shout on next Sunday, we'll really be honoring them. Hallelujah! Glory! 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 Hallelujah! Mighty God, over these past 21 years, imagine the funerals. Imagine the times of, of, of need when we've called them in the middle of the night, interrupting their sleep. Imagine the many times on their knees, wearing out their knees, the neighbors have to hear our names being called because they're always before the Lord petitioning on our behalf. My God, we just give God thanks and praise for 21 years of dedicated service. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. And so we honor them today. Hallelujah. On next week, Sunday, during our 9.30 a.m. worship, we will be celebrating them in a more meaningful way. And so we look forward to all of you being a part of that. Amen? Amen. Okay. Our service schedule for the week is as follows. On Tuesday, uh, this coming Tuesday, our apostle will be live via Facebook at 6 p.m. My God. On what a time they had on yesterday. To God be the glory for what he is doing, what he is birthing, what is happening in the kingdom. Hallelujah. My God, we thank God for what he is doing. Also on Wednesday. Our morning glory prayer meeting will be via Zoom, and that also will be at 5 a.m. And so you can catch the link right on our church um, page, ufmii.org. You can um, join in with us 5 a.m. every Wednesday morning. Somebody shout Operation Thanksgiving. Operation Thanksgiving. Listen, it's on. It's on. And so the countdown is on. Mighty God. It's going to be Monday, then Tuesday. Wednesday, mighty God. Then comes Thursday. So we're talking four days away. The one of the biggest moves of God in this time and this season will take place on these grounds by the honor and the glory of God, where we will feed mighty God 3,500 souls. Can you imagine that? What a feat. Can God do it? 
Yes, he can, and yes, he will. And so we look forward to those of you who are going to volunteer. We give God thanks and praise those of you who have already started to bring in your donations, those of you who started to donate financially. Listen, it's not too late. Whatever the Lord places on your heart, do it. Watch God. He's trying to get something to you. Amen? To be his hands extended. Let's do it. Let's all do it together. When the eye becomes we, great things happen. And so we encourage you. Some envelopes have gone out. So those of you who've received the envelopes, this is the week to bring it. We'd like to really have it between Monday and Tuesday. Amen? If you've not brought it today, those of you who are in the house. So you want to get it here. Those of you who are watching, listen, that donate button is right there looking at you so pretty. Just press it and we want you to donate to this worthy cause. God will be glorified. And listen, it's coming back to you. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Amen. And so we look, uh, look forward to what he's going to do. Operation Thanksgiving will take place here on the grounds, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And this church has always been big on giving God thanks and praise. So during the same day at 9 a.m., we're going to have a wonderful th service of Thanksgiving. Just giving God thanks and praise. It's not a Thanksgiving day around the world. Amen. And so we're going to give thanks and praise to God at 9 a.m. And that is also going to be live. And so we bless God for what he's doing. This coming Sunday, as I forementioned, um, our 21st pastoral anniversary service will take place. It will be a service of thanksgiving and appreciation to our leaders. Amen? Amen. We want to say happy birthday to those persons that celebrated on last week and will be celebrating this week. CJ, that's Chrissy's husband. Mm, Chrissy has a husband. So he, along with Sister Lisa Roll, will be celebrating on the 28th of uh, November. That's this week. And so we bless God. Happy birthday to you. God bless you um, as you go throughout this week and as you celebrate. May the blessings of our God be upon you richly. Amen. I'm about to take my seat. But you know, I can't take my seat unless we do a little something, something. And so I want to know. If anyone here believes that God was with them this past week, I am a witness. I am a testimony. When I put that blood cuff on my hand and saw what that pressure read and the fact that I'm standing here today, I know God was with me. Amen. But I know I'm not the only one because God is just like that. Just how he is with me, he is with Minister Lisa, he is with Minister Shanique, he is with Minister Marissa, he is with Elder Sophia, he is with each and every one of you. And so if you know that God has been good to you, I see our Lady Sharon in the back. She celebrated a birthday, my God, who didn't get an opportunity to do that this past week. If you know that God has been good to you, if you know that it's God who's given you the breath, the ability to stand on your feet right now. Hallelujah. There's some that aren't able to stand today. There's some that are laying in a hospital bed. But we're here as a testimony to God. And so I'm asking you this morning, join me with giving God a glory. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to the person that is on the side of you and tell them, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. If you believe that, somebody shall glory again. Glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And just a side note, just before the praise team comes on, as I said, Operation Thanksgiving will take place on Thursday. And in that same vein, those persons that intend to volunteer of whatever it is you're volunteering, your time and your resources and all of that, Pastor Christopher uh, Strong would like to meet with you just immediately following this service, please. So just remain behind, and we're going to see what he has to say, and God will be glorified. Amen? Amen? Man, yeah, man. If you believe that, somebody shout glory! Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The atmosphere is right in th this morning. Hallelujah. And we're going to give him continual praise. The song says, I'll give you praise for the rest of my days. Is that your commitment? I'll give you praise for the rest of my days because you've been just that good. I'll give you praise for the rest of my days. As long as I am breathing, I'll give you praise for the rest of my days. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Feel free to praise and worship your God this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
great are you in our lives. We honor you for who you are. Hallelujah. With a heart of thanksgiving, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Come on, would you lift your hands? Would you lift your hands in this room? Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands in this room? Hallelujah. I will bless thee. I will bless thee.
lift your voice in this room. Lift your voice in this room. Bless you. Bless you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. You alone are worthy of glory, honor, and praise. Our souls make us boast in you, Lord. That the humble will hear the love and be glad. We lift you up in this
I will bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. That's a personal thing. You got to do that for yourself. I will bless the Lord at all times. My soul will bless the Lord. You got to think about that. You got to think about that. And, and the other part of that says, he has done great things for me. Uh, can you testify this morning? Has he done great things for you? This is a, te a personal testimony. I mean, if God ain't did nothing for you, just to be here today is enough to give God praise. You might be looking for something that he did for you, but just to be in the house of the Lord today is enough to give God praise. He has done great things for me. When, when I reflect on my life, when I reflect on my life, I, I have not spent one night in the hospital in 62 years. I have never been in the hospital once in the, in, in the hospital bed at night in 62 years. If he ain't did nothing for you, I can tell you he's been done great things for me. See, you, you, you got to, this has to be personal. You have to have a personal experience in what you're singing and talking about. You can't go on what nobody else say. You got to go on what you know. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth because I know what he did for me. It got to be personal. Hallelujah. I could remember in 2014, I could remember going down in the water on my plane. I could remember landing on the water. God has been with me. I could remember when I land on touchdown on the water on Clifton Pier with 11 passengers, souls on board. I could remember when the plane touched down on the water and we landed on the water. I could remember when the engine shut off and the plane sunk because of the weight of the engines. I could remember my helmet and headset went off and I went like that. Let me tell you something that you never knew before. When my head fell down, everything went black. I, I have a loss in time, a loss in moment. I don't know what happened between that time. I don't know how long it was. But when I went down, I blacked out. My headset went off. My head went off. Everything went forward. All I could remember when I came back up. When the plane came back up, I sat in my seat and I look around. Everybody sitting down in the plane, seat belt fastened and looking at me. I could remember telling them, I said, you all need to get out of this plane. You know, when you land on the, run, on the airport and you come out and you let your passengers out, they're waiting for you to un open the door and come out. So everybody was sitting in their seat, sitting down on their seat, comfortable, no injury or anything, nothing, just sitting down waiting for me to open the door to let them out. So I said, no, you all need to get out of this. So, yeah, but God has been good to me. That could have been the last time. That could have been it for me. But God has been good to me. That's why I can bless the Lord. Because I know what he did for me. You might not have a testimony. But God has been good to me. I have so many testimonies of the goodness of God. In my life. That I can tell you. I don't need nobody to, to prompt me to give God praise. Every moment I get. Every chance I get. That's why every time you see me get here. I'm grateful to God. It's been six years ago. God has been with me. I'm still here and he's been blessing me ever since. When you could bless the Lord, when you could give him praise, he inhabit the praises of his people. So when we can give him praise, that's when he, he continue to bless you. I would bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue be in my mouth. I come to help you to get a blessing today. Oh, but I had to plug that in. God has been too good to me. In this season of thanksgiving, every chance we get, we got to be able to give God thanks. We got to be able to give him praise. Because we, sometimes you don't know what he keeps you from. Sometimes you don't know. 
Sometimes you're thinking about, well, I got to save this for that or the rainy day or whatever. You save it for rainy day, then rainy day will come. You know, sometimes you don't know. That's the protection of God keeping you. Sometimes that same money what you're saving for when you got to go in the hospital, he keep you out of the hospital. You see? So you got to be careful and give God what belongs to him. Recognize that God is the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can have. I come to encourage you today to give back to God. I'm just so happy for God today. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Put it on the screen for me. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. If you understand what that means, you determine your return. You determine your return. If you sow sparingly, well, that's what you will reap. If you sow bountifully, you'll also reap bountifully. So you determine your return. Go to the next verse for me. So let each one give as he purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. You purpose in your heart what you would give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. See, this is what I, I like right here. God loves a cheerful giver. You know, today, just for a, uh, a brief moment, I want to talk to you about the joy of giving. That's what I want to talk to you today. And I want you to ponder the joy of giving. God loves a cheerful giver. This is, this is see, when you're giving cheerfully, you're giving with joy. You, 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 you're not burdensome. You're not grudgingly. You're giving with a heart of joy. He said, with joy joy of giving because he, he said everything we do in this Christian walk should be out of joy. Joy. When we come and serve God, joy. When we forgive somebody, joy. Whatever we do, the joy of the Lord has to be bubbling down on the inside. And when we give with that joy, the joy of the Lord would, would compel us. It will cause us to give if you got the joy down inside of you. But I want to tell you now, there's different levels of joy. There is different levels of joy. You may have joy, but your joy that you have may be only enough for you. Your joy that you have may only be enough to take you through. You ain't got nothing to spare. Your joy, what you got, only to get you from day to day. But we're talking about, now I'm talking about overflowing joy today. This is what I'm talking about. Overflowing joy. The Bible says, exceeding joy. The Bible says, great joy. This is what we're talking about. And we talking when he said joyful, it means full of joy. So if your joy is full, it got to run over. If your joy is, is exceeding, then it's going to run over. If you had overflowing joy, it means it's running over. You don't have to worry about being, you have no shortage. It run and overflow. You still got joy because you got more than enough to spare. But if you only got a little bit of joy, then you're holding back on what you got. Because when you give that up, you ain't got no more. So you got to increase your joy. Let's, let's give with that overflowing joy. Let that joy inside of us cause us to give. Cause us to give. Because when we experience what God did for us, we should have that joy inside of us. And it should be so, so overflowing. It should be said, I pray that your joy would be full. When your joy is full, then it got to run over. It can't hold no more. Any more you get, it got to go overflow. So your joy would be full, overflowing. And from the inside, it will come out to the outside. So I just want to encourage you today. As you give, give with a joyful heart. Exceeding joy. Exceeding joy. I just want to, this last, one scripture I want to just pull to you. The rest I wouldn't even pull to you. Because if you look up that word joy, it's so... It's so powerful. It says, and uh, the one I want to pull for you is
Yes, John 15 and 11. I think that's the one I want. That's the one I'll pull. John 15 and 11. Put it on your screen. John 15 and 11. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. You see, we're talking about two different kinds of joy, you know. We're talking about the joy, God, the joy of the Lord. That's my joy, is that a big M? My joy may remain in you. And that your joy. So you got his joy and you got your joy. You see, so we want your joy to get full. His joy is going to remain in you, but we want your joy to get full. And when your joy is full, then you're going to give. You're going to give. So I encourage you, as you prepare your tithes, I know you should already have it. And your purpose in your heart, which you give. In, 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 increase the giving. That's all I encourage you to give. This day, as we venture into this, this day, uh, we talk about uh, this Operation Thanksgiving this week. You, if you hadn't had a chance to plant your seed and get an envelope for that, some more is still here available. And I encourage you to do your best. God's going to do the rest. God is going to blow your mind. Once you make up your mind to do something, you would be surprised how God is going to bless you. We just want to trust you with it. So I encourage you to come. And I also want to um, encourage you. Next Sunday is our Pastor Appreciation Sunday. As you come and plant your seed and bring your tithes, I'm going to have these envelopes sitting right down there. For This is Pastor Appreciation Seed. Take one of these with you today as you go and so that you can bring them back on next Sunday. We appreciate the man of God. He has been with us. This is uh, is celebrating this entire month. 20 years, you could imagine that's a long time. And I, I know God has been good to you. He's been good to him. He's, he's been good. And we're going to show our appreciation to him for what he has done. So uh, as you come and, and, and get your uh, and plant your seeds, we, I just want you to take your envelopes. And, and, and you know God is going to bless you when you plant in a good ground. You know the, he got the heart of God. You know that. And so when you plant in, in that ground, you're going to get a good return. You that may be watching, you can start coming at this time with your tithes and your, your offering. You might be watching online on our website. You might be watching on, on our Facebook. I encourage you, press your, that donate button right now at this time and give and watch God blow your mind. Come on this time and give your offering. Your tithes.
for you who has not to receive your envelopes, there are more at the front desk. So as you walk out, all there, okay, there are more here. Okay. You know, I just want to tell you, you can't beat God given. So, like, you, I, I, I said to you in the beginning of this Thanksgiving, I pledged that, you know, I'm going I to give $150 because I felt God. So, Sunday before last, I placed $200 in my seat. But I felt, no, I need to do something about that. So, last Sunday, I placed a $300 in my envelope and put it in there. And today, I placed a $500 in my envelope because I, I, I know that God is up to something great. We're talking about 350 person on Thursday, but I wouldn't be surprised if 500, 5,000, 5, 3,500, I wouldn't be surprised if 5,000 people show up in this parking lot on, on Thursday. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised because the word is out and God is going to blow our minds. And the same way we freely give, we are going to receive. God is up to something great. And so I encourage you, be a part of what God is doing. God is going to blow your mind. Look to the Lord with me. This time, as I pronounce a blessing over your seat. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you hear my prayer. Now, Father, I call you upon you to receive our returns and our love gift unto you. With a willing heart, be your people. Have returned our tithes and our free will offerings and our sacrificial seeds unto you. Rain down your pleasure upon these tithes, free will offering, and sacrificial giving this day, exceeding the expectation of all who give. In Jesus' name, I pray. Now, Father, now, Father, we lift our hands in thanksgiving and praise that it is so. We thank and praise you that the devourer is rebuke for our sakes over our seed. And everybody say, Amen. Let all the people say, Amen. Let all the people say, Amen. We give God praise. Worship, a given is worship. It's a part of worship where we can be a part of what God is doing. Once we give, we know the principle, give and you shall receive. We thank God for this. Now, we want to hear from God. The word of God is coming to us today by our bishop. We know that he hears from God. We know that he's a man of God. He loves the Lord. He's going to bring the word for us today. I ask you to be attentive and receive the word as God speaks through him to you. Listen to the word of God today. Let the word touch your heart. Whatever the man of God has for you today, let God speak through him to you. Whatever is for you, you take it. You run with it. Be obedient to the word of God. Just before he comes, I praise the name with minister and song. The next voice you will hear with that of our bishop, Bishop Buford Curtis. I ask you to stand as he has sent to the pulpit. God bless you to praise the name. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands in this room? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song says, Hosanna in the highest. Let our king be lifted up. We lift him up today. We lift up the King of glory today. We lift up the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We lift our hearts to him. We lift our minds to him. We set our affections on him. We make him the center of our attention, the center of our, our focus. We fix our eyes on Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. We lift him up with praise and with worship. Hallelujah, we give him thanks today. Hallelujah, we give him glory today. For he is deserving of the glory. Let our king be lifted up. Let our king be exalted. Let our king be magnified. Let our king be glorified. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus. Sing it.
Hallelujah. Lift him up with your praise. Let our King be lifted up. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Hallelujah. Worthy, 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 worthy. Glory to you. Glory to you, the Lamb of God. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. Hallelujah. And be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory. He shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Somebody in this house, just open your mouth and give this great God a worthy praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. King be lifted up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Come on, let's bless the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to his holy name. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. I listen to my elder. And I can say just like you. For 59 years. Never spent a night in a hospital. Hasn't God been good? He has been good to me. And I can tell of his goodness about four weeks ago. I slipped and fell in a sunken floor on the edge and hit my head on the edge of a sunken floor and split my head in half. But look at me, God is an awesome God. God is a healer. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. I give him all the praise. Could have been a different story. But God has been good to me. He has been faithful to me. Today I count it a privilege. Count it an honor to be in the house of the Lord today. It's an honor. It's an honor serving under the stellar leadership of one Apostle Fathman Alexander Perks and his lovely wife Alice Sophie. Come on, let's bless the Lord for the gem. This gift to the body of Christ as they celebrate 21 years in ministry. God has indeed been good. A man of faith who walks by faith and not by sight. Walks by faith. It's a faith walk. It's about to do, only take faith, a strong determination to be called to carry out this assignment. Everybody didn't have that assignment placed on them. But God has given them that assignment. And we are here to see that the assignment come to pass. We give God all the praise. Oh, thank God for your apostle. Thank God for your elder soul. God bless you, sir. Appreciate you, my brother. Love you, Pastor. Love you, Mother Sophie. You know, we go way, 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 way back. Way back. God is good. God is good. And I just bless God. You have a pastor. have a heart, a 
Because he'd give you shepherds after his own heart. It's the man he's given us after his own heart. Praying man. I give God the praise. Honor for him today. I bless God. I honor God for all of you, our pastors, Pastor D, Minister Marissa, Pastor Strong, and Minister Delores. Honor the Lord for your mother, Elder Bodhi, Elder Brown. God bless you and all of our elders who are watching, Mother. Elder Musgrove, Elder Hopkins, all of you, Mother Gibson, God bless each and every one of you. Welcome Deacon Donnie back. Deacon Donnie is in the house. God bless you, Deacon Donnie. Amen. I bless God for every minister. Elder Aris, you've been promoted. Elder Aris walks in. Yes. <laughs> all of our ministers, all of our Leaders here, all of our members, those watching us by way of internet, I want to send a shout out to my beloved mother, Mama Queen Elizabeth Curtis. God bless you, Mother. Mother Carey, God bless you, my lovely children. Lady Arthur Quincy, Patrick Deesh, Doc, God bless all of you. You know, God is so awesome. God is so awesome. I have to just run aside, give my cell phone there, please. You know, God is so good. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, yeah, God is awesome. And he's, he's an on-time God. He's a mighty God. And I just give him the praise the honor and the glory for what he is doing in this hour. Also, you know, I guess I'll just share this. I um, saw a post my son posted. And, you know, not many times, you know, our children tell us things. But I just appreciate this. This appreciation post. It's what he wrote, appreciation post. He have a picture of me performing at this wedding. The root sending the shoot off. Growing up, just thought of dad as daddy. Pops, the man with the cool walk and best cologne. Coming into my own though, the appreciation is much more. Appreciation, an amazing individual. Dad truly. Dad truly is my hero. God be the praise. You know, mother. You know, growing up, I look up to my father. I look up to my grandfather. But you know, Apostle, I never really tell him 
so much really appreciate Let me take things for granted. I appreciate everything you're grateful to them, but you really never really say that I really appreciate you. you say it after they go on. You say it to other people, you know, my daddy is special. But you ever tell him that? You're special. Boss, I appreciate you, sir. Ella Sofa, appreciate you. <laughs> my wife of 37 years, appreciate you, my dear. I love you. I wouldn't be able to do it without you. God is good. For a few moments. Matthew 9, 35 through 38. Then Jesus ran about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered. Like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Our Father and our God, to you we give all the praise, all the honor and the glory. We know our help cometh from you, you alone who made the heaven and the earth. I thank you right now, Father, for this opportunity you've given me. I do not take it for granted that you allow me to stand before your people. But, oh God, I pray that let self die and let God arise. Speak for and through me today. Let the words of my mouth, oh God, let the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. You are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. This month we are aggressively harvesting for the next dimension. We look at aggressively aggression. Might be known as a sense of urgency. In order to reap a harvest, one has to do some sowing. In order to reap a harvest, one has to do some sowing. It's useless to say, I am a good farmer. I am the best farmer there is. And you have seeds and you don't do no sowing. Your seeds will stay right there in the jar, in the bag, wherever you have them. And you will not get a harvest. But in order for you to reap a harvest, you must do some sowing. Our Father in heaven, when he wanted to have a multiplication of sons and daughters, he gave us his only begotten son. The Bible says the word became flesh and it dwelt among us. If we truly desire to see souls save in this time, in this season, we must prepare ourselves and be committed to the work at hand. We must be prepared and willing to work the harvest. Each and every day, there are opportunities for sowing the seed of God in the heart of some individual. It may be in a simple word, some kindly act, just a line in a letter or in a WhatsApp, in a text or in a quote. And the seed is sown on some life 
is blessed. To reap a harvest of souls, we must sow the word of God. A spiritual harvest is the result of God's work in the heart of man. It is clear <coughs> from the parable of the sower. Some people's hearts are good soil. Some hearts are stony soil. Some hearts are rocky environment. When the word of God is sown in good soil, the person accepts it and continue to mature. Luke chapter 8 and 15. But the ones that fell on the ground, on good ground are those who haven't heard the word with a noble and good heart. Keep it, and it bear fruit with patience. There is nothing, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, man, there was a liar this morning. There is nothing we can do to change the soil. That's God's job. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27, it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you will keep my judgments and do them. That's God's responsibility. Yeah. Our responsibility is to declare the word. Is to plant the word of God in the hearts of somebody. And let the word of God change the environment. That's God's job. To change the soil. But we can be faithful to sow the seed. We can be faithful to help the plants to grow. And to reap a harvest. The apostle Paul while speaking to the Corinthian saints says. I have plotted. And Apollos watered. But it was God who gave the increase. I want us to think today of the importance of how evangelism affects in spreading the gospel of Christ to the world. We are to fill. We are to till the soil. We are to sow the seeds. We are to wipe the ground. We are to water those seeds. But it is God who will give the increase. <coughs> I am convinced. And I feel deeply within my spirit that we are going to see a great harvest here at UFMI. God is up to something great. It may seem small in the eyes of people. Or they may want be wondering, why are they doing this? What are they doing this for? On Thanksgiving Day feeding 3,500 or 4,000 to 5,000 people. What are they doing it for? But God has something up. I believe that there will be a great harvest. Hallelujah. All we have to do is just plant the seed. Water it with the word and allow God to give the increase. I believe in this season we will see family members that we have been praying for for a long time. Come to know the Lord as Savior in their life. I believe lost ones from the community are going to come and surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. I believe this because I feel in my heart, we, a group of people, we are hungry to see a harvest in our midst. From the scripture that we have read here in Matthew 9, we find that there is potential for a great harvest. But there is a problem. There is a potential for a great harvest. But there is also 
a great problem. You know what the problem is? You laborers. The harvest is right, he says. Yeah? The harvest is right, plentiful. The harvest truly, see the word, the harvest truly is plentiful. But the laborers, that's the problem. That's, that's a big problem there. Because because the harvest truly is plentiful. Yes, Pastor D, you can imagine you have several acres of stuff ready for harvesting. And you don't have no laborers to reap it. What will happen? They will spoil and they will rot right on the vine. The harvest truly is plentiful. But the laborers are few. When you examine the wickedness of the world in which we live. When you see the evil that surrounds us, it is clear that there is great work to be done. If you are actively involved in church, you are also aware that there are only a handful of people rolling up their sleeves to labor in the fields. The time for us to harvest is now. Jesus told his disciples, do not say, there are still four months. And then comes the harvest. Do not say that. Behold, I say to you, now lift up your eyes and look at the field, for they are already ripe, ready for harvest. In harvesting for the next dimension, there are three things that we must do as laborers in the Lord's field. We must visualize. We must visualize. We must be sympathetic. Sympathetic. We must evangelize in this season. Verse 36, 35 says, It is, as laborers, we must visualize. Verse 35. It is virtually important that we see the needs around us. And then we must meet those needs. We must see what Jesus saw. He saw sheep without a shepherd. He did not see Bahamians. He did not see Americans. He did not see Jamaican. He did not see Haitians. He did not see Chinese. He did not see the Africans. He did not see Cubans. However you are from, he saw sheep without a shepherd. Hallelujah. He did not see the rich. He did not see the middle class or the poor. No matter what their status were in life, he saw them as a sheep without a shepherd. We must see what Jesus see. We must see through the eyes that Jesus saw. He see people as sheep having no shepherd. He see them as lost going to a Christless hell. That's what we need to see. If we want to reap a harvest, we must see people as sheep lost without a shepherd. We must feel how Jesus felt. He had compassion on the multitude. We must do what Jesus did. He ministered to their needs. Evangelism does not have to be an organized church program. But evangelism must be intentional. We must see people for what they are. Lost souls in need of a savior. We must comprehend the consequences of them dying without Jesus. They are designed for the lake of fire. We must realize that we have the information that they need to rescue them from that fatal eternity. If we are going to reap a harvest of souls, then we as a church must visualize. We must see the mission field. So Jesus went about all the cities and villages. When we think about a mission field, many times we think of places far, far away. Where's the place our eyes go in Africa? 
Asia, India, Haiti, Jamaica, all of those far, far places. That's what we think about, eh? And it is true that these places are mission field. It's a fact. But let's not overlook the fact that there are places that need to be reached right here. Right here in our community. Right here in our country. Jesus went about all the cities and villages. The fact of the matter is that we live in the midst of a vast mission field. Andrus is a mission field. Exuma is a mission field. San Salvador is a mission field. Rumkey is a mission field. Paradise Island is a mission field. Old Fort Bay is a mission field. Your place of employment is a mission field. Your school is a mission field. The bowling alley is a mission field. All of the food stores are mission field. Some of you, your own home is a mission field. Wherever you go is a mission field. Wherever there are lost people is the mission field. Say that again. Wherever there are lost people is the mission field. And as a church, and as an individual, we must visualize. We must look around and see the lost people everywhere we go. And we must see the devastating condemnation that awaits them if they die lost in their sins. The Bible says to die without Christ. God is a consuming fire to the wicked. And when we see the mission field, then we must share the message of the good news. Just as the physical growth of a field, the spiritual growth of people is a natural, organic process. Overseen by God himself, if we don't see anyone getting saved, it can be discouraging. But we need to remember that sowing is just as important as reaping. Some of us are sowers and may never see the result of our labor. That is why I want to tell you, church, our focus should be on pleasing the one who sent us into the field <laughs> rather than on controlling the rate of growth on the other mount we reap. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Our focus should be on pleasing the one who sent us into the field rather than on controlling the rate of growth on the ground. The rate of growth or the amount we reap. God's laborers in the spiritual harvest of souls are promised great rewards for their faith and perseverance. Put James 1 and 2 on the screen for me. Let's see what James 1 and 2 says. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Oh, you, you can have perseverance, you know. You can have trials. You can have tribulation in this world. First Peter 5 and 4. What does First Peter 5 and 4 says? says? And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Great rewards. Great rewards for your faith and perseverance. 2 Timothy 4 and 8 says, 2 Timothy 4 and 8. Finally, talking about great rewards, finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearance. Great rewards await those 
who persevere. Got to persevere. This applies to all aspects of our spiritual lives, including witnessing and seeing people saved and growing in the Lord. Sometimes we don't see it, but as believers, we are confronted with these words. Let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not give up. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I said before, when you labor in the vineyard, when you sow the seed, you may not see the harvest right away. But the word of God is admonish you today. Let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, <coughs> we shall reap if we do not give up. Jesus went about teaching in the Son of God and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. We find in the latter part of the verse that Jesus healed sickness and diseases. For that very reason, many people followed Jesus and there was always a crowd near him looking for a miracle. But the fact that Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom to them is much more important. We know that Jesus healed sicknesses. He made the blind to see. He made the deaf to hear. He made the mute to speak again. And the lame to walk. We even know that he raised people from the dead. But those were only temporary fixes. One day those who receive a miracle will still die and face eternity. Even those who were raised from the dead would one day die again. But through the preaching of the gospel, many receive a miracle that will last throughout eternity. Through the preaching of the gospel, they receive the miracle of salvation. That is what we are mandated to do, to preach the gospel, to bring good news to the poor and to the dying in our community. Matthew 11 and 15 says, The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. There are people today who are looking for a miracle. Some are looking for a solution to their financial problems. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Let me say to you, those who are facing financial problems, and you're going from house to house because you have a hunch so you can bet a bunch. Let me tell you something. For a sure win, take your chances with Jesus. It will change your life, and it will change your luck. For there is a guarantee. That you will win and live in paradise. Jesus is the winner man. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I think I can repeat that again. Because I ride over this country, over this city. And man, they line up there. They're lining up for food. Hallelujah. They, ha they had a dream. But I can tell you, a lot of people have dreams. That is the kind of dreams God is talking about. The dreams he's talking about is how to vandalize to somebody. How, how to bring hope to somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. They, said, they talk about a man who had a dream, Pastor D. He got up 5 a.m. in the morning. And he had this dream. And it was 5 a.m. And he dreamed about the number 5. And he said, this is his lucky day. So he said he go into the bank. And he, gonna, he have a hunch because he had a dream. So he went to the bank. And he was number 5 in line. And he went. The person that served him was teller number five. Yeah. He said, I am on a roll right now. Yeah. So he drove his last $5,000. Yeah. And he went to the horse race track at La Rufus. Yeah. And he put his number, $5,000, on number five. Yeah. Because he had a dream and he was on a roll. Yeah. But why can I tell you something? Yeah. That dream, he was on a roll, all right? Yeah. Because horse number five came in fifth. So when you think you're winning, you're losing everything lining up, but you're losing. But you, if you take your chances, oh, bless the name of the Lord. If, 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 you, if you want a sure win, take 
your chances with Jesus. It will change your life. It will change your life. Not on your luck, but it will change your life. For there is a guarantee that everyone will win and live in paradise. For Jesus is the winner man. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Some are in desperate need of a solution to their marital problems. You see, Jesus knows exactly what you need. For my Bible tells me that he had need to go to Samaria. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. For there was a harvest in Samaria. He had need to go there. And what happened? He stopped by the well. And there was a lady at the well. She was all alone, Pastor D. She was a lady. I don't think other people wanted to associate with her. Because of her character, she had marital problems. Huh? Jesus asked her for some water. And she had all of this. You know, you being a man, you know, that's a small talk now. You know, you know how you go. You know how the woman go in society. You know how they go. You asking me. You, you the man. What you, what you asking of me? Uh, you, you know exactly how the Bahamian girl go. You, you asking me. You should be giving, you should be, you asking me for water. I'm a woman, man. You, you can't see. Huh? You should be drawing some water and bringing it to me. But Jesus buy for bubble. If you only know who asks you for water, you will ask for the living water. See, this water that you asking for right now, when you drink this, you're going to need to drink it again and again. Or to quench your taste. But when you drink of the living water, it is a well of living water springing up into everlasting life. Woman had problems. Jesus knew her problems. He said, go call your husband. Yeah, you have problems. My real problems. Go call your husband. Say, Lord, um, I have none. <laughs> he said, yeah, you, you have said it right. Jesus is reading a book. Reading a life, just a book, open in front of him. You have said it right, but you have, have five of them. And the one you have now is yours. So you, you have serious problems. Huh? But when Jesus began to minister to her, she even forgot what she came to that well for. She left everything at the well. You see, when you touch one person with the true and living word of God, one word can change that individual life. And they will leave everything that they have. And they will go and evangelize the word to somebody else. For she went, the Bible says, she left her water pot. And she went into the villages. And she went to all the men. She said, come see a man. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Come see a man. Not a man that want to sleep with me. Not a man that want to buy me out. Not a man that want to pay my rent. But come see a man. Oh, bless the name of the Lord God. Hallelujah. See, we be hooked up with too many different men. But if you meet the man called Jesus, you will experience a change in your life that you have never experienced it before. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. We talking about Jesus is the winner man. See, a cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. He said, the gold is mine. The silver is mine. So the man in your life who is your husband, he can't do nothing for you. He can't do nothing for you. Even some of them whiteless husbands. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. You man out there, you get some whiteless man out there, Pastor Day. You get some whiteless men. I saw on the news the other day, this lady had five children. Five young children. Where are the men in those children's lives? They can't go to school. They can't. Men, you can't just sow your royal oaks all over the place and not take care of the children. That is your responsibility. 
Father, oh God of mercy. Stop being weightless. That's your responsibility. You lie with the woman and she get pregnant. That's your responsibility. That ain't a state responsibility. That's yours. beating up no man but I'm just telling you you got to be, be a man God made you a man be a man stop being a jelly box be a man be responsible God gave that responsibility to you parents train up your children huh parents train up your children that's what the word of God says. God leaves them to the state to train. That's why a lot of them in Fox Hill prison. Because they had no father figure in their life. You refuse to do what God has signed you to do. Oh, man. There's harvest over there. Harvest of neglected children. All around. That woman, let me tell you, one may have been a mistake according to you. One may have been a mistake. But if, if that joker, if that joker is a joker, that's what Mother Soap said. If that joker is a joker, then you decide to leave him to go to another joker. He he check it for you. God just gave you science, you know. He ain't doing nothing for you. He ain't trying to get you the situation you're in. And you'll be fool enough. Heaven must be missing an angel. What time you have the Bible? <laughs> I dropped that line on you. Uh, I dropped that line. You, you take a hook line and singer. <laughs> My wife told me that one. <laughs> hey, she, she on the line of us. It's an old fella. He say, he say, wow. He say, man, he say, what time? What time do you have to be back? Wife look at him. Great. He said, what time you have to be back? What's wrong one? He said, yeah, you got to be from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yes, sir. Uh, he said, got to be from heaven. And he almost time to go on his way to heaven. He <laughs> said, what time you have to be back? Because you can only be an angel from heaven. Lord of mercy. But woman, your responsibility to know who you're getting tangled up with. Yes, sir. Your responsibility to know who you're getting tangled up with. Yes, sir. See, the fella, if you tangle up with the fella, and all he want to do, he want to gamble, he want to drink, he want to party. Hey, man, come on, man. That's, that's what you want? That's what you want? You get fellas who hook to this gambling thing before they leave, when they leave the, the drop, before they reach home, they ain't getting no money, you know. Oh, boy. Take your chances with Jesus. He's the winner, man. Some are facing the terminal. Disease and they're looking for a solution to the health problems. Jesus can solve each and every one of those issues. But there is no benefit in being happy, wealthy, healthy in this life, and then dying and going to hell. Let me say it again. There is no benefit in being happy, healthy, and wealthy in this life, and then dying 
and going to hell. Some people are only looking for a crutch when what they truly need is the message of the gospel. Romans 10 and 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What does that say? Whoever, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What that mean? Whoever? Whoever means the President of the United States, the Queen of England, the Pope, the Prime Minister, the Cabinet, the Senators, the Justice of the Supreme Court, the Magistrate, the Rich, the Poor, the Lame, whoever. <laughs> Lord of my sake. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? I'm here to tell you today. That is time to trust in Jesus. Time is not long as it has been. Time is not long as it has been. The signs of the times are everywhere. But rapidly, this dispensation is coming to a close. Make sure. That your anchor hold and grips the solid rock. There are going to be some turbulence. There are going to be some rough days ahead. But we know if we hold on to Jesus. Hallelujah. Without the gospel, there is no evangelism. Without the gospel, there is no mission work. Without the gospel, there is no help for those in the mission field. It's imperative that we share the gospel. In Romans 1 and 16, Paul says that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Let us see the mission field and share with them the message of the gospel of Christ. Jesus shared the gospel, but he also served them and perform many miracles. Ministry involves more than just sharing. It involves serving. Jesus healed many sicknesses and diseases. Not only did he heal the physical infirmities, he cast out many demons as well. On a couple of occasions, he, felt he fed thousands of people. Throughout his ministry, Jesus illustrated the importance of service. Jesus Christ was the ultimate servant. Mark 10 and 45, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. The entire life of our Savior was a life <coughs> of service. Do you remember when he washes the feet of his disciples? The Bible said he, raises, he rises from supper. He lay aside his garments and he took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. This was the job of a common slave. Yet Jesus humbled himself and he served others. May we never look at a job in the ministry and think that it's below us. Service is vitally important in reaching others for Jesus. As we embark on this mission as we embark on feeding folks on this coming Thursday let us be reminded that what we do we must do it with love and a heart of gratitude we must do it as unto the Lord whatever we do if we hand it out a plate hand it out with a smile on your face hand it out with the right attitude you don't know when you hand that plate to someone 
that may be a seed planted in their life to bring a change about in their environment. Serving others make them think, I wonder why he did that for me. Or what makes her so different. Service is a proof that we love God. And it helps draw others to him and his church. We are never more like Christ when we are serving others. Philippians 2, 5, 8, 5 to 8 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Not only should we love them to Jesus, we must love them like Jesus. We must minister by meeting people's need with love and humility on Christ's behalf. Matthew 20 and 26 says, But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. As laborers, we must, we must see the multitude and move with compassion on them because they fainted. That's how Jesus was. He saw them scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Jesus saw this multitude, and he was intensely moved with sympathy and pity because of their condition. They are described as being sheep with no shepherd. This was the multitude of people who were utterly neglected concerning the interests of their souls. There was no shortage of people. And there was no shortage of problems. As Jesus looked upon their hurting faces, he had great compassion as to their situation. Today, there is no shortage of people. And there is no shortage of people with problems. It is not up to us to judge these people. It is not up to us to condemn these people. We must realize that we were once as lost as they are now. We must realize that God does not measure sin. As we do, and rather than looking at people wrong us for their sin, it is time that we see them as Jesus sees them. Lost souls that need a Savior. The only way we'll ever see a harvest of souls is if we come to a place of intense burden for those lost souls. We will not see a harvest of souls until we finally get the fact that hell is real and people are going there. It is time that we quit playing the game. It is time that we quit going through the motion. It is time that we stop doing church. It is high time that we become the church. We must realize that we are the body of Christ. We are his hands and we are his feet. We are laborers. Hallelujah. The harvest truly is plenteous. Laborers a few. Pray. Therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he was sent for laborers into the harvest. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, look, there are plenty of people who need to hear the message. There are plenty of people who need to be served. The mission field is ripe and ready to harvest. Jesus wanted these men to know that there was a great work to be done. Today, there are many, many people in the field today that they were in Jesus' time. And these people are in great need. They are sheep with no shepherd. These people are on a path that leads to destruction. And today, more than any time in history, we need to evangelize. We need to evangelize. Jesus said unto the disciples, the harvest truly is plenty, but the laborers a few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into his harvest. Are you prepared? Are you willing to be a laborer into the harvest of the Lord? Are you willing to declare the word wherever you go? Make a difference in your community. Make a difference in your home. Make a difference at your workplace. Are you prepared to be that laborer? Because the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers 
of you. God bless you today. God bless you as you stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Whatever your decision is today, God will equip you for the task at hand. Never feel as though you are unqualified to be used by God or to spread the gospel of Christ to the lost. Failing to spread the gospel is much like watching a person as they go into a burning, into a building on fire and not warning them of the fire. If you're out there today, and you don't know the Lord as your Savior, this is an opportunity to you, for you, to make that commitment. The Bible declares all of sin and come short. The glory of God. But if you confess in your sin, if you confess your sins, believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, that Jesus died for you. He rose again. Huh? Man, he will save you. Ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to make you a new creation. He wants to, he wants us to abide with him. That's why Jesus came, you know. From the beginning, he was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. We were lost. We were without hope. He said, Father, if you prepare for me a body, I will go and redeem your people back to you. So he came. He died on Calvary just for you. Young man, young woman, middle-aged man, middle-aged woman, Boy and girl, old man, old woman. If you do not know the Lord as Savior, no matter how long you've been on this earth, not for what you did, not for the works that you did, not for the charity you have given to, that is good. But if you have not accepted the Lord as Savior, acknowledge Him as Lord in your life, and given your life over to Him, whatever you did, Vanish away. But if you allow the Lord to come into your heart, allow Him to change you. You may say, Rev, I have an addiction. Yeah, God can take away the addiction. He can take away the addiction for nicotine, and He can do it just like that. The people say it's a process. I try and aim by might, aim by you trying, is allowing God to do the work in you. He's calling your name. He's calling your name. He wants you. He's pleading right now. He's pleading right now that you surrender your life to him. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you today, Father God, for your word that have been spoken. Thank you that I know, God, that your word will not return to your word. But it will accomplish that you set it forth to do. Pray for that one, Lord, listening right now, Father, who on the borderline of making a decision for you. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit, God, will arrest them wherever they are right now. Father God, cause a spiritual awakening to arise in their life, Father God, that they will cry out to you. They will surrender their life to you, O oh God. Hallelujah. In the midnight hour, oh God, let them know that you are right there. Let them know that you feel their pain. You are God who can be reached by the feelings of our infirmity. God, those that may be in the hospital right now, <coughs> may be God, oh God, at home, God, sick. Oh God, whatever sickness and disease, Father, in the name of Jesus, we send the fire of your anointing, oh God. Oh, God, to eradicate every sickness, every disease in their body in the name of Jesus. God, we bind sickness 
We bind disease. We bind viruses over this country. In the name of Jesus. Father, for you said whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we released on earth is released in heaven. Release healing by truth over your people. In the name of Jesus. We pray for this country. We pray for our prime minister, oh God. We pray for the members of his cabinet. We pray for the members of parliament, oh God. We pray for the senators, God. As they go forward, God, as they enact laws, we pray in the name of Jesus. Father God, they will seek your direction. Oh God, enable to enact laws that are in conformity to your word, oh God. We pray, God, as mankind, oh God, wants to get rid of the word of God. We pray that this country will stand, oh God, on godly principles. According to your word, Father, we give you praise now. We pray. For our doctors and our nurses. We pray for our healthcare workers, God. Oh God, our police officers, our defense, our immigration, our customs. Oh God, those on the front line. Oh God, in this country fighting whatever this is, Father God. We pray in the name of Jesus, a covering over them. Oh, keep them, Father. Keep our healthcare workers. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Give your people, oh God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, to follow. Oh, God, the medical advices, Father, for you give doctors for us. Oh, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask you now, oh, God, to bless this leadership. Bless our pastor. Bless his family, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless the leadership of this ministry. Oh, God, you have labored in the vineyard 25 years, 21 years. God, I pray. In the name of Jesus, you will continue to give them the strength. Give them the strength that they need, oh God, to continue, oh God, this journey. Oh God, for their reward awaits them. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for his generosity. We thank you for his steadfastness, oh God. We thank you for the vision that you have placed in his heart. And we thank you, oh God, for the provision, Lord God. We release it from the east, the west, the north, and the south. And we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And we thank you that persons coming on this ground, oh God. Oh, they will leave this place. They will leave this place refreshed. They will leave this place revived, oh God. They will receive, oh God, inspiration. They will receive revelation, oh God, impartation, oh God, from the love that will be shared among them. We give you praise, Father. And all glory and honor will be unto your holy name. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please put your hands together. Welcome our senior pastor. As you come and go to the Come on, let's close out with that. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor Come on and let's give God a clap offering praise. What a word from the Lord today. Come on, let's give the Lord. As a matter of fact, give the Lord a shout of praise in the house. Come on, somebody give him a shout of praise in the house. Bishop, I really bless the Lord for you. Thank you, man. 20 years together in this house and the Lord has blessed us. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. I don't have all I want to say now. Let the church say amen. That's all I need to say. 
He has done it all and released me, so I just need the church to say amen. And God bless you too, lady. Amen. God bless you, my pastors. Bless you all. Bless my wife of 31 years. 30 years plus. Now, before you walk out of this place, I want you to really meditate on what God has said through the man of God. He ended by asking us a question. Do you want to be one of those laborers that is reaping the harvest? Jesus saw something and he told us, if you're going to reap the harvest, you've got to visualize it, see it. Brothers and sisters, if you are seeing what Jesus is seeing, and your heart is moved like Jesus' heart was moved, the Father will be glorified. If your heart is not moved for the things of God, then we, will, we shall remain dormant and as is. We shall remain brothers and sisters on average street, and the time is running out, so the harvest is plenty. As you leave this place, ask yourself, what can I do? Lord, what can I do? I'll tell you what you can do. Just be a laborer. Offer yourself. You know, it's amazing. And he gave us so many scenarios. You can be that on your job. You can be that in your community. You can be that at home. When you go into the food store, you can be, you can be a laborer for God. Let's just, let's not act like people are not lost. Remember, people are lost and need a savior. And someone harvested for me. That's why I hear. Someone was harvesting for me. And uh, I can tell you all, I remember Bishop Father. He said, leave his family every week and come down. I don't know how they did that. And he, was, he would be in Farmer City and harvesting me. I give God all the glory. So, may God bless you all today. You, somebody, is the cause for your salvation. So let's be the cause for someone else's salvation. Now there's a meeting that's going to be here today. Come on, let's put your hands together and bless the Lord for the bishop one more time. Before I um, say my final comments, a thought came into my uh, mind, you know. Don't be more afraid of the virus that can only kill you. That's all the virus could do is kill you. And, and the thing about it is, if somebody say, thank you, somebody, somebody say all of you ain't gonna die. Because many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers us out of them all. What you need to be afraid of, or have, not afraid, but you need to fear the man who can kill both body and soul. And so let's make sure your soul is anchored in Jesus. And your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Grand Bahama, I love you guys. See you all tonight. Great Abba Key, love you guys. Just bless God for you all. Everybody and everyone who's watching us around the world. We honor the Lord for you. This is a very important week for us here at U UFMI. And uh, the 5,000 shall be fed. Because we are united in faith as a ministry. And we are going internationally. <laughs> I just want you all to know that God is up to something great. And we're going to put a smile on somebody's face this week. But the eye must become we, so amazing things will happen. Miracles are happening for us. Minister Debbie, miracles are happening. I want somebody to know. Amen. And this week, between now and Wednesday, we want to exceed our budget. Come on, somebody give the Lord glory. And we're saying to somebody who's still watching us, you know the Lord is touching your heart to plant a seed. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it so that we could do more. 
so that we could do more and watch God. Oh yeah, you just watch God. And um, and those of you in the house, and the Lord lay on your heart, you say, but I gave my 150, but you know what? Fossil, I want to still buy a ham, man. I, or I want to buy one in Canada made a paste, or I, I want to buy something. What's still on the list? You just come and see me. And I can tell you how much you could give me. You know, so if you want to still give me $30, or you want to give me $40, or you want to give me $50 toward tomorrow, we got to have we have a hundred, I think I got to step that up one time because I can't afford to wait.